Ah yes, here you go. This whole fucking video, dude. Crack pipe. Whoa. There we go. Now we're staying high. Sure. They openly hate and try to destroy all the pillars of Western society, whether or not they're positive to just science, capitalism, freedoms like speech, and Christianity. Sure, man. <laughs> Understanding social justice. Let's go. What is, uh, what is this channel? What are we looking at? What if alt history? Alt history channels are such a coin toss. What's going on in Ukraine? Oh, wait, I'm kind of curious what their take is in the situation. Is Germany a future superpower? Is this, um... Wait, is this the modern symbol of Germany? This one right here? I'm pretty sure that's not like the modern German flag. <laughs> pretty sure that, I, that that symbol evokes different... The Iron Cross evokes, in my mind, different imagery. It's still used by the army? Okay. All right, understanding social justice. Let's find out. Let's learn. Last summer, the United States had one of the very, very few rebellions in its history. Six blocks of downtown Seattle formed an anarchist state that declared independence from the United States of America. Woo! They fought with the authorities alongside demanding the abolition of the police in general. Roving bands of protesters looted the city. Their utopian state literally collapsed into a dictatorship run by a SoundCloud. All right. We're, defi we're definitely framing this a little bit. Uh, I don't think... Wait, did he just say anarchist state? <laughs> okay, so protesters held a few blocks for like a couple of weeks, and that went to shit because of course it did. I don't... Yeah, there's nothing about that that's particularly surprising to me. ...rapper in the first couple hours, and they ran out of food within the first day. At the same time, erecting literal shrines to George Floyd. Shockingly, the reason it survived so long was that they were supported by the mayor of Seattle, who refused to evict the rebels. Left-wing media, in turn, reported this case oh god. in a oh very my god. skewed way. There's already so much misinformation, okay? Waiting for a couple of blocks being held by protesters to, like, just sort of simmer down is not the same as supporting them. I'm pretty sure they weren't being supported. They were just, they just thought that it would be easier to just, like, let things burn out, which they did. I mean, okay, we're looking at a high school paper right now. I don't know what the shrine to George Floyd has anything to do with anything. He was a guy who died. Usually when public figures or figures who are made public in death die, people do those, like, tributes in cities. That's a pretty common thing. And they didn't run out of food in the first day. That was just a tweet of people asking to, like, bring pizza. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't even like Chaz, dude. I think Chaz was LARPy bullshit, okay? But, like, yeah, it's weird. Describing the revolt as like a block party or peaceful protest. Some of my friends in Canada and Europe say it was barely even reported over there. This was complimented by... It, let's be fair. It wasn't really a big deal, like, in the grand scheme of things during the rest of the Black Lives Matter protests. Chaz was, like, not that big of a deal, you know? And also, Fox News would not shut the f*** up about it when it was happening. So it's not as though nobody was talking about it. By riots across the country. I'm sure lots of people have similar stories. Riots across the country. But my friends in Philadelphia saw people use dynamite to blow up ATMs, widespread looting, fires, and breaking cars in wealthy downtown areas. One of my friends from Britain... Well, thankfully, we don't uh, form our opinions on historically large protests by a bunch of anecdotes. And we instead look at studies we have that indicate that Black Lives Matter was quite peaceful. In Virginia. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Was that st from 2000 to 2020? Wait, this st this graph is from 2000 to 2020. Ah, yes, the the famous uh, the famous Black Lives Matter protests, which lasted just around the same time as the Afghanistan War. Fires and breaking cars in wealthy downtown areas. One of my friends from Richmond, Virginia, told me that their police- I'm not going to be able to go through this whole video, just to let you guys know, but, like, this is clearly going to be kind of like a misinfo barrage. ...station was burned down, as well as literal buses in the street. These riots uh -huh. and rebellions, which were largely supported and never denounced by the mainstream left-wing media- What? Everyone was denouncing- First of all, the rioters and arsonists you're talking about were a tiny fractional minority of the broader tens of millions who protested, and everyone was condemning them. Everyone was. I love this. Just completely making shit up. Yeah, CNN was denouncing this shit, man. We're based on the murder of a single black man in Minnesota. What provoked an otherwise rational society to behave in this manner? That's the question of this video. 
This video is so loaded. Okay, right off the bat, what if alt history? Do you want to talk? You're probably going to know this video came out. Do you want to talk? Et cetera, et cetera. Like, you clearly came into this with a massive narrative. Like, you clearly had a story to tell, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, we could watch this and tear this apart, like, bit by bit if you want. I know this isn't supposed to be some, like, scholarly, academically cited, you know, breakdown of the situation, but this framing is pretty bad. I do. Huh? Now, what if all history is really pretentious and tries to source his shit? Then what was this gigantic, hyper-loaded intro with, like, no sourcing except for a graph that doesn't even address the time period at hand? Hi, I'm Rudyard, the guy behind What If Altist, and as a YouTuber, I've honestly always loved my fan base, and uh -huh. I'm really thankful for you guys, but I always felt like my community had more potential that hadn't been reached, that there'd be so many different ways that we could build a rich community and have beautiful experiences. What are you, what are you showing for? This is a for? problem one of my best friends, housemate, and massive okay, what, what is this? fan of What If Altist built around content creator, yep, a waitlist, okay. a bunch of sample, okay, okay, channel, okay, there's okay, okay, okay. Okay. This video is meant to be a breakdown of the social justice movement, pulling on my knowledge of history, philosophy, religion, and just thinking <laughs> rationally. How did the movie? My multidisciplinary expertise. Also, what is the social justice movement? What does that What does that refer to? Just everything? All progressivism? What does that mean? Movement start. What's its underlying psychology, rationale, and where I think it's going? You're going to start to see my political opinions, and even though I'm uh -huh. center right, I wanted this video to be rooted in common sense and values that all reasonable people from different cultures or political beliefs could agree with. Before we get started, I want to set up several definitions and tell you where I'm- There is nothing on earth more consistent than a person saying they're conservative and then saying, but I'm not biased, I'm just full of common sense. There is nothing on earth more consistent than that shit, dude. An appeal to intuitive rationale is just such an, such an incredibly telling indication. I'm coming from. The first of which is that social justice is a very difficult movement to define, as we'll see, because it's it not goes a across single many movement. different parts of the left in many different fields. But I define social justice as a group whose identity is primarily built around fighting oppressive structures. And as an Wait, so the Revolutionary War, the Communist Revolution, literally everything? The, the Nazis thought they were fighting back against the oppression of the international Jewish banking elite? Every, that's every group. Every group all the time thinks they're fighting against oppression. That's what everything. That's what every group says. Every group says that. What, what what definition is this? If your movement is built around ending class oppression, you're a communist. <laughs> I see. If you're based around ending cultural oppression, you're social justice. Gotcha. Bosh, that's not what he means. Come on. Well, maybe you shouldn't try to use a term like social justice movement to describe something as broad as fighting oppression. Everyone thinks they're fighting oppression. Example of that, not all environmentalists are part of the social justice movement. No Wait, all environmentalists are attempting to fight back against some form of oppression. So, no, now he's carving out exceptions to groups that he's okay with. So he might have an overly broad and unusable definition of a social justice movement, but now he has to find exceptions for things he doesn't have issue with. So he has to be like, okay, well, not these guys, you know. Not all socialists are part of the social justice movement, oh. but the social justice movement has many people who are part of the environmentalist and socialist movement. So I'd say most environmentalists in Western countries are aligned with the social justice movement. Uh -huh. As another example, I would say President Biden and center-left groups like the New York Times aren't explicitly social justice. They're more center-left. I guess we're in a better pos well, I agree they're center left in in America. I, I guess that's better than claiming they're all communists, I guess. But the language that Biden and Kamala Harris Kamala Harris have used are both pretty in line with what people consider to be like social justice. But oftentimes they have lots of social justice people in their alliances and so end up becoming beholden to them. At the same time, I don't stand against anyone who's trying to do genuine good and deal with legitimate oppression. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, social justice movements are movements that are trying to fight oppression, but not, like, when the oppression is, like, real. It's only when it's, like, the oppression I don't think is real. It has to be legitimate oppression. I guess I'm glad that he's acknowledging that like the the civil rights movement weren't SJWs or whatever but the problem is this is the problem is the lack of self awareness here okay there is no definition that separates these groups the difference is he was okay with reactionary politics now but he's against what is now considered to be a settled issue because it was fought against 50 years ago that's the only difference the only difference is back then it was like legit but like now it's not you know which is a common argumentative tactic used by reactionaries like okay well the past 300 years of racial justice was good but now it's gone too far you know 
And of course, in 50 years, people are going to be saying the same things. They'll say the same stuff about trans people, too. They'll be like, okay, well, back then, that was necessary trans activism. But now the trans people have gone too far. Where I would say the movement to get gay rights or the civil rights movement are both good. But... I think these people Thanks. come from a very different tradition than modern social justice, uh -huh. where Martin Luther King, for example, drew from the American tradition of us all being equal before the law. And Oh my God. Guys, MLK was the guy who said we should all be equal, and that's the thing that he said. Also, wait, what is this? Wokes. Moral character really doesn't exist, so we can only judge people by their skin tone? What, what fills a person with this level of, of Dunning-Kruger? Jesus Christ. God. But these modern social justice people come from a Marxist tradition that tries to tear down the successful rather than- Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement was explicitly inspired by Marxism. Explicitly inspired by Marxism. The, cla the Marxist uh, uh, dynamic of class antagonism, of, of material uh, uh, dialectics, you know, directly informed the civil rights movement. Then pull up the downtrodden. At the same time, I don't think the right is blameless, and the right has done bad stuff in the last oh, two years. Oh, thanks. An ill done on the right doesn't justify an ill on the left. Also, for those of you who are going to say this is a biased rant with no research, I've actually done... You caught me. ...a tremendous amount of study from all perspectives to get to this video essay. From all perspectives. That is another classic conservative spicy meme thrown in there. Dude, I can't be biased. I've done research on all sides. And, like, you check their sources, and, like, of course not. And that's never the case. And that's not even what you should be seeking to do. Some sources are better than other sources. You don't need to get info from all sides if you're talking about climate change. You only need to get it from climate scientists. Hey, I've read anti-social justice pundits, as well as taking a course in gender studies, reading foundational texts of social justice, uh -huh. while also reading the philosophic and historical context, like I always do with these videos. Uh -huh. I spent years in social justice dominated educational institutions, and so I know their arguments inside out. A lot of people don't know how far this movement's gotten, so I'm going to give some examples. Uh -huh. For one, the Biden administration has referred to women as birthing people because saying mothers might be transphobic. Nope, that's incorrect. They have not referred to women as birthing people. They're referring to people who give birth as birthing people. Biden still uses the term mother and woman. Uh, they're specifically referring to, in, in, a, in a strictly medical sense, language, which refers to, say, for example, men who can get pregnant, which are a thing that exists in a legal and in a, uh, 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 you know, a, a, a social sense. So we're not replacing the term mothers or uh, women here. Back. The Canadian government passed a bill making it illegal not to use someone's preferred pronouns. Nope. The C-16, man, this is the research? The C-16 bill was simply an extension of existing Canadian uh, civil rights legislation, which added gender identity um, to the list of categories which precludes discrimination by employers or landowners. This is the research, really? The Guardian posts articles saying hating men is okay. CNN's- Well, hey, oh, first of all, this is more than six years old. Are we really just pulling- I thought we wanted to see how far things had gone to end. This is a random opinion column from a, from a newspaper. Just, that's it? Just opinion columns? Just anything? Do, or do we want to go through tweets? The follow-up to this says, Hurting men's feelings is not the same as life-threatening misogyny. So I think the title of this is stupid. But it's pretty clear what they're referring to. What they're saying is that hatred towards a men would not be a mirror or a reflection of systemic discrimination against women. The argument here is that even if feminists did hate men, that wouldn't suddenly flip or reciprocate the gendered violence and uh, oppression that women experience. Uh, it would be hatred, and that would be bad, but the problems that women face are not just being hated by misogynists. I don't even need to look this up to know that, because I have basic, like, reading comprehension skills, but, you know. Guardian posts articles saying hating men is okay. CNN supports reparations for slavery, something most black people don't support. Oh, supporting, wait, supporting reparations is woke nonsense now didn't he say that he supported like pro civil rights movements in the past the fight for reparations has been going on for 150 years do you think that martin luther king jr didn't support reparations he did he explicitly called for them something most black people don't support okay for the next round of oscars they have quotas on how many people from oppressed groups you have to have on the staff of your movie in order to be eligible these are all I don't know shit about the Oscars. I don't know. I don't care. Moderate left-wing places as well. I could go on and on with stories like this. In just my personal life, for example, how there were protests in the college I went to when the college Republican club tweeted out, vote for Trump, or my high school replaced a yearly study of foreign country week with social justice week. 
Alternatively, right. the only real okay. demographic that really twists my words unfairly and tries to destroy me, especially on Reddit, is these leftists. My He's mad at people in our bad philosophy tearing apart his videos. This is bad. Dude, bad philosophy is a great subreddit. Um, they just tear apart people who say, like, stupid, uninformed shit. Shit liberals say, well, they're not lefties, they're tankies, but uh, alternate history, uh, no stupid qu I don't know anything about that sub, but yeah. And the comments down here says, a small sample of leftist Reddit posts about why I'm evil. Mate, these aren't about how you're evil, they're about how you're wrong. Why, why so fragile? What are you, some kind of SJW? You can see them right here. These are clearly effort posts on how you're incorrect in your videos. These aren't about how you're evil. My friends in the finance, entertainment, and tech industries say a significant minority, if not a majority of firms, just aren't hiring white men anymore. This is entirely anecdotal, so I don't know the real percentages. Or truly, we're seeing the, the fruit of research being born to bear. Just not hiring men anymore. Just white men can't get a job anywhere anymore, you know? Like some, some people told me. I've seen some tweets more, going entirely for diversity hiring. I hate it when people say social justice is just a marginal movement, that it's confined to campus as an ivory tower fools, or that it's not that radical. Both of these are normally what moderate left-wingers say to apologize for it in the same way moderate right-wingers do for extreme nationalists or normal people do for their delinquent cousins. The truth is that this is an ideology that controls much of the entertainment, media, and education worlds on almost every level, and a larger and larger share of the what? political and corporate worlds. How did we get here, though? I noticed that he's not sourcing any citations on this. <laughs> Just sort of saying stuff. Social justice is a very organic philosophy and that unlike Marxism or Christianity, there was no one prophet who set the philosophy out, but instead it kind of just formed from a bunch of different roots and bumped around universities in the 1990s until it became- 1990s. Social justice came about in the 1990s. But also social justice is why people push for reparations. Something that's been around since the end of... <laughs> oh, this this guy is showing his age 100%. This is... This is... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Uh, we're never going to make it through this video. This video is a fucking gold mine, man. Holy shit. This has to be a troll. No, this is just a person who has an incredibly high opinion of their own, own intelligence, letting that get in the way of them doing any actual introspection or research, okay? First of all, if this guy wants some advice, using the term social justice movement and then spending time cutting out caveats so that you don't, like oppose abolitionism like you have to be more specific with your movements do you mean the modern environmentalist movement do you mean the black lives matter protesting movements do you mean the black lives matter organization do you mean fourth or third wave feminism do you mean trans activism what do you mean like you can't you you don't you don't know what you mean is the thing you you think that there's just like the woke like there's this woke blob but really all woke refers to is people who are progressive like, that's it. That's really it, you know? But then you're like, well, not including the progressive movements that I like. Well, okay. Well, I like these ones, too. It became really public after the 2008 financial crash, quickly amassing influence over all of society. What? What? A bunch of different routes and bumped around universities in the 1990s until it became really public after the 2008 financial crash, quickly amassing influence over all of society. There we go. Yes. <laughs> so, sure. People often roast Jordan Peterson for saying social justice formed as cultural postmodern Marxism, but that's historically accurate. Ah. If you wanted to find the place where the ball started rolling that eventually resulted in social justice, it would be with the disenchantment with traditional Marxism that came during and after World War II. Wait, they don't realize that the- he doesn't realize the issue people take with that statement is the contradiction between Marxism and postmodernism. Once leftists realized that Marxism had failed in every single level imaginable by not reaching a utopia, being poorer than capitalism, killing tens of millions of people, and not even attracting the working classes, Well, once the left had been epically owned by realizing that their f their epic fail communist utopia didn't actually do anything good with their 100 gazillion f dead. Leftists had to find a new story in order to retain their core beliefs. Ah. You know those weird cults that build their entire worldview around the world ending? Ah. Normally what happens when the world doesn't end is that those cults fracture and make some minor edits to why their overall story was. Okay, can I be real with you guys? Like, super, super real? I actually get super bored when... It's just minute after minute after minute of them just narrativizing with no supporting arguments whatsoever or any historical analysis. Literally just like, and then the woke, are, like, it, it's just boring. I want to, can I like skip forward to like see some specific arguments maybe? Uh... Wasn't working. Why the philosophic merit, but from my perspective, largely translates to everything. Okay, this is good.
Let's let's see him explain postmodernism. As those groups rose to greater social predominance. Likewise, another branch of former communists in France founded the postmodern movement, which some of my really smart friends tell me actually has deep philosophic merit. There we go. From my perspective, largely translates to everything's a social construct for power and there should be no broader stories. Postmodernism doesn't believe in any... Uh, that's not a bad summary. I don't know why he typed out blah, 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 then. That's, a, that's like a, a reductive but not entirely off the mark assessment. I don't know why he typed out blah, 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 then broader theories of the world, but the logic that developed was something like, if broader stories are wrong, we can create a story which is about opposing other people's oppressive stories, which hold down oppressed groups. What? This sort of view became more popular in academia in the 1990s as the baby boomers. Wait, 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 wait. Postmodernism is when you disagree with the oppression and you have your own story? Was it, was it postmodernism when there were abolitionists who thought black people were equal to white people because they were creating their own story? What? who are significantly more what is this? than their parents took Far over academia. What? As the baby boomers gained power, academic departments went from being around three quarters left wing to 1920ths, which resulted in an echo chamber in which pandering to one's own faction was the way to get ahead. As the boomers entered academia, you saw the development- Wait, get ahead how? Wait, how do you think getting a job in academia works? Various departments- Th This image is being used as part of a well-researched argument Guys, I, listen, okay, I've got a highly researched argument that I want to throw your way, all right? Now, hold on, let me, okay, so do you know what the cuck zone is? All right, let me explain it to you. Holy shit. This guy, this guy is crazy Dunning-Kruger pilled, man. This guy probably thinks he's like 600 IQ, and all of his arguments are basically just a distillation of boomer Facebook posts. He, it's just like Ben Garrison, the, 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 the video essay departments like women's race, post-colonial, and queer studies, which largely existed as ideological laboratories for the movement that would develop. Uh -huh, social uh -huh. justice theory developed with all these various departments working together in a common social... ideological coalition. We'll go through justice? these later, but a lot of the inconsistencies that came from social justice theory derived from how it was a series of unrelated academic departments that were allied in a common ideological cause. Let me give what? an example. It's why it's acceptable to change between genders, but not between races. What? But in higher academia, discussions of transracialism do exist. What? Basically, like this is the this is the 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 thrust of the entire video. But this guy is mistaking his lack of understanding for these subjects as there not being any answers to them. This is a really common thing for people with an unduly high uh, confidence in their knowledge in the subject do, where they don't understand something, so they assume that nobody does, and they're the only one wise enough to understand that it's not understandable, you know? They, they have a gap in their knowledge, and they assume that it's not a gap in their knowledge, it's just a gap in the knowledge, and he's the only one who's operating as though that's the case. A cornerstone of social justice theory is that oppressive identities are fake and should be deconstructed as a moral good in of themselves, while subjugated identities are real, since they pull on the supposedly real or subjective experiences of- what? what Wait, woke people think that being a man is a deconstructed social construct, but being a woman isn't? What? Wait, 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 what? Gender abolitionists want to get rid of gender, all gender, men, women, or whatever else. Racial abolitionists want to get rid of race as a concept. What? We're just making stuff up. ...the oppressed. Thus, for a white person to become a black person is evil, since it infringes upon the black person's positive identity. Wouldn't that mean that being a trans woman would be evil? Because that would be a person with a hegemonic identity, assuming the identity of a non-hegemonic group? Wait, by his own logic, wouldn't that also refer to trans... women? But he just said that we think trans women are okay. Meanwhile, for a man to become a woman is good, since it breaks down the oppressive structure of gender. What? Wait, what? 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 Wait, those are analogous. What do you- ...to become a black person, real or subjective experiences of the oppressed. Thus, for a white person to become a black person is evil, since it infringes upon the black person's positive identity. Meanwhile, for a man to become a woman is good, since it breaks down the oppressive structure of gender. What? I think he's saying we believe that. What? But those are internally inconsistent, even. That's his point. He's trying to point out inconsistency. That's my point. He's just stupid and doesn't understand how him not understanding it doesn't mean we don't understand it. 
That's <laughs> he's creating inconsistencies in his head and getting mad at us because he can't reconcile them. Even though in real terms, the biological differences between the sexes are far greater than those between the races. Ah. Another version of this is that the feminist movement is in contradiction with the trans movement in that if gender doesn't exist and is oppressive, then women's separate identity as women, which is biologically ingrained, carries no value. This is the root. That is an argument that TERFs make. He is correct in that TERFs do make that argument. But I don't think anyone would call TERFs part of the mainstream feminist movement. Of the anti-trans feminist faction called TERFs. The thing that really elevated social justice into the public consciousness as an important ideology was the process of growing social tensions that I've talked about in these videos, largely driven by a combination of population growth and globalism. The crisis of the 21st century. Why is America crazy now? Why is the world crazy now? This guy is like the politics equivalent of a guy who's only ever played like World of Warcraft in his entire life. And then he sits down and plays Call of Duty and he's like, I'm noticing some real World of Warcraft vibes in this game. Like, that's all I'm getting from this. This guy, like, probably got into politics two or three years ago and is like, oh my god, the world is crazy now. Holy shit, I have to speak truth to power. Like, very, very much like, hold on, the, the main character is here. Let me stop this show and tell you all, uh, let me, let me tell you all what the problem is. This meant the standard of living has in real terms gone down in Western countries for the last 50 years, which when paired with growing inequality caused an immense amount of social tension which created political polarization. This is really plain to see in that all the social justice keywords skyrocketed from complete obscurity to the public view with the failure of the Occupy Wall Street movement, which... The, this chart only started going up in 2014, aka when the Black Lives Matter movement started. Sh if it was because of the Occupy Wall Street, shouldn't it have been like here? Okay. I mean, correlation, causation? Came shortly after the 2008 financial crash. The 2008 crash resulted in a rapid decline in standard of living, and like every other similar era of history, people fell into extremist ideologies that looked for scapegoats. In a system which seemed biased towards privileged white males, for example, with bailing out the banks seemed. while the economy fell apart, it looked reasonable. At the same time, the internet made populist movements like social justice easier to form. The internet made populism of both right and left-wing varieties more powerful, and we definitely see this with social justice, a movement promulgated in advance. Social justice is... Taylor Swift is over. When is Laura Lee finally canceled? Every one of these tweets is from a different year. 23 li This This is it? Social justice is when people on Twitter dislike celebrities? Is that... Something that famously did not happen before the Occupy Wall Street crash. Before that, nobody ever com complained about celebrities and wanted them to get off the air. Collectively through the I internet, rather video, than through man. more mainstream top-down political ideologies. I always wondered why social justice behaved in such a strategically irrational way. I mean, this is a movement that literally shits on its own followers as terrible people and- Literally? Not li not literally, right? Uh, okay. Why, why, okay, just video essay tips. You're speaking out loud. Why are you just adding these tangents? It's like you have so much, like, bullshit to spew that after recording the script, you just felt like adding in more text slides to just because you wanted to add, like, more arguments to fit more in per second. Whatever a white or straight person does, they're evil. Yes. Move on. Actively looks at the most powerful and largest groups in society and says they're evil. But I didn't realize that this is primarily a mob-driven movement, not one that's controlled top-down. When I say social justice is irrational, I'm not being biased. I'm stating a literal- <laughs> Well, thanks for clearing that up. I, ap I appreciate that. I, I was getting worried, you know? ...real fact of its philosophy that even its founders would agree with. Like some right-wing parody of left-wingers, they believe that logic and objective reality are Western constructions. They take the postmodernist what, argument- What? 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 Can, this guy can just say anything, man. He can, he can be like, actually, SJWs... <laughs> SJWs think that thinking is actually a form of oppression because you have to conceptualize reality, which is a form of subjectivization. So, actually, they just don't think, and they just sort of do photosynthesis. Like, we're just saying stuff now, man. ...that all ways of knowing are social constructions, and combine it with the Marxist viewpoint that all culture can be explained as a struggle between the oppressor and the oppressed. The Smithsonian are the most important government-owned music- This f***ing chart, dude! They still won't- they won't stop mauling over it. By the way, everything in this chart is true. 
It's based and true, okay? But it's only true if you're willing to engage with it in good faith as a form of academic rigor, not if you're just like kind of a stupid YouTuber who sees it and like interprets everything in, in a highly essentialist way. Um, I mean, I've gone over all of this before, but when we talk about aspects and assumptions of white culture, first of all, this isn't an explicitly negative conceptualization. And second of all, you have to understand that a lot of the cultural precepts we have in this country are directly a product of the way in which whiteness was conceptualized and weaponized against non-white people. So for example, right down here, time. Follow rigid time schedules. Time viewed as a commodity. Now, if you were reading this and you were very stupid, you might assume that this pamphlet is saying that only white people are capable of following rigid time schedules or uh, that uh, uh, it's oppressive to follow rigid time schedules. Again, this is what you might believe if you were thick. Um, but actually, and there are really interesting studies on this, our conceptualization of time and the way time relates to uh, you know our obligations and responsibilities is a very culturally dependent thing. People make jokes about like Mexicans and Italian people both having much more lax attitudes towards punctuality than people in America. And to an extent that's true, but it's not a, like a, a, a normative denunciation of those beliefs. Uh, some people, some cultures are just more of the opinion that rigid time schedules are not as big of a deal. That's not like a negative thing. That's just a that's just a different cultural perception. And to put it another way, there are cultures that take time, timeliness more seriously than we do. You understand? So I think, for example, if you take a look at infrastructure in Japan, they are much more timely than us. So from the Japanese perspective, they could say, Germans as well, they could say that we're slow, that Americans are, and people say this about Americans. People say that we're lazy, that we're lackadaisical, you know, stuff like that. Like Germans and Japanese people have a much more rigid work culture. So we talk about Japanese work culture here in America, for example. They work way harder than we do, okay? Way, way, way harder than we do. They're expected to work after their shift. They're expected to show up early. Japanese work, work culture is now imagine if we were in Japan and they had a pamphlet which said expectations and assumptions of Japanese culture, right? In Japan. And one of them said, time, follow rigid time schedules. Time is viewed as a commodity. They would be right to do so relative to us. That, and you would understand that because from your perspective, that would be an unusual bias the Japanese have towards timeliness. But that's the thing. The, th the fact that you think what they have is an unusual bias, but what we have is normal, is the aspects and assumptions of white culture. That's why it's called assumptions of white culture. People in America take all this stuff for granted as normal cultural tendencies. And when other people deviate in either direction, more or less timely, you think, oh, well, that's weird, but what we do is normal. Well, the purpose of this pamphlet is to point out that there is no normal. All of these are biases. It's like the equivalent of people saying that Californians don't have an accent. And they say that because we tend to standardize American accents to what we see in movies, which are made in Hollywood, and Hollywood actors tend to have Californian accents. In reality, Californian accents are as distinctive as Southern accents or as like Northeast or Jersey accents. They're just accents of English. There's no right accent. There's just accents. But some are more normalized, and therefore we make assumptions about them being the default. Does that make sense to everyone? The reason why this pamphlet is fine as long as you engage with it in good faith? My issue with the pamphlet is the fact that it wasn't going to be engaged with in good faith, and it was stupid to publish it this way, because, like, we don't live in a society where people are going to engage with this intelligently, you know? museum system in America released this chart of whiteness, which went about describing whiteness with characteristics like hard work, being on time, or rational objective thinking. The first problem is that these- Remember what we talked about? Remember? They're just objectively good things, and that society- <laughs> Default assumptions and aspect of whiteness. Well, the first problem with this is that all these things are normal and good, so they're not like assumptions or aspects of white culture. <laughs> oh, man. Societies that work hard automatically crush those that are lazy and are wealthier, but- also, also, nothing here says these are bad ideas, by the way. Look, white dominant culture or whiteness refers to the way in which white people in their traditions, attitudes, and ways of life have been normalized over time and considered standard practice. That's it. Nothing here says any of these things are bad. He's making the assumption. 
these aren't white either. The Celts in Britain at the birth of Christ had a value system that didn't value hard work or objectivity, and they're equally white. Meanwhile, the Muslim world- And now he seems to believe that the pamphlet is saying that only white people are genetically capable of having these values and that they're genetically rooted rather than it being a cultural preconception we hold today. He's assuming, A, that the pamphlet is denouncing these concepts, and B, that the pamphlet is arguing they're genetic, in spite of the fact that the header of the pamphlet explicitly describes these as social biases we've normalized. The world used to be in the cutting edge of science. Similarly, if you go to a university STEM class in North America today, most of the students will be Asian. The most punctual, hardworking people in the world today are in Asia. Science obviously isn't a Western way of knowing since he other doesn't cultures understand. are wholeheartedly embracing a scientific worldview since it can be objectively proven. Ask an educated- Dude, no wonder bad philosophy tears into this guy. Holy shit. Indian, if they support the oppressive Western way of scientific knowing or their traditional- See, he said oppressive. Nowhere in that pamphlet did they say any of these things are bad. He's assuming all of this because this guy is so f***ing biased. He can't see, he can't pay attention to anything in front of him. Magic systems, which by the way, all races used to believe in, they'd say science without a thought. This all ended up being a backwards form of racism that exists to assuage the guilt of smug liberals at the expense of- Assuage? You mean a- it's a swage, right? I know I mispronounce words a lot, but that that was that was a very that was a very direct one right to my face. <laughs> Actually oppressed groups. Look at rap culture in which modern culture literally encourages antisocial traits like <laughs> crime, drug usage or broken families in the African American community. <laughs> Again, he keeps adding these footnotes in his shit because he's like so rage typing everything out. Ah yes. I, I remember good old uh, 1980s rock and roll, which did not encourage any bad behavior. Since to judge it would be racism. However, this has really negative effects on the black community. We should be supporting the productive elements of the African-American community, not the most antisocial. Uh -huh, Alternatively, uh -huh. look at West Coast cities like Vancouver or Los Angeles that have horrifying drug and homelessness problems, largely caused by the lack of an ability to judge on the part of a morally handicapped elite. What? The homelessness problem is because the... The rest of the country isn't condemning the homeless enough? We, we have homeless people in LA because we're holding off too much on condemning the behavior of the homeless? This guy's phenomenal. I really hope I can get this guy on stream. Holy shit. The city of Vancouver had a policy of not judging homelessness and drug usage. What, wait, what policy? What does that mean? Also, what do you mean by judging? He was talking about, like, virtues and moral behaviors before. Why would you judge homeless people? Like, just for being homeless? Their only real policy being having clean, government-controlled sites to shoot heroin in. Oh, sick. I was staying in downtown nice. Los Angeles last week, and the homelessness crisis had made an otherwise wealthy and cool area into a deeply unpleasant, nearly uninhabitable place with a sheer amount of crazy homeless guy. Oh yeah, okay, this guy's definitely like 20 years old, at least mentally. Dude, there was no homeless problem before, and then like, for some reason, because we weren't mean enough to homeless people, then a bunch of homeless people popped up. <laughs> However, mental illness and drug abuse is when people aren't in their right minds, and considering that Western societies had practically none of either 60 years ago, means that this is a pretty easily solvable problem. We didn't have drug use or mental illness 60 years ago. American homeless population over time. We didn't have stats on it. Also, is this per capita or just in total? It doesn't say. There's no X or Y axis. Well, I guess there's an X axis because it shows the time frames here. These addicted people and their families, whose lives they've often really hurt or ruined, would probably in the long view be thankful for a government that doesn't act like a smug, negligent parent. Yeah, having a talk with homeless people, I agree. The main thing they're really crying out for is a government that is meaner to them. I notice he's not talking about, like, policies. He's just like, people aren't mean enough to homeless people. At its heart, social justice is a poorly constructed religion more than anything else. Wait, what does this have to do with that? Today, like how to be an anti-racist and white fragility, which boiled down to an idea of original sin in which white people must admit they are always racist no matter what they do. And I won't defend Robin D'Angelo. I bet you this guy hasn't read either of these books, though. Nearly every action a white person does is inherently racist due to the racist structure of society. Nowhere are actual steps to deal with racial iniquities in the real world. Wait, what? Wait, what are your solutions then? Wait, if you want like solutions to that, where what are your solutions? Posed. The cardinal flaw of the modern world, which our descendants will just face bomb continually, is our arrogance and overestimating human abilities. All the cool philosophies that have developed what? since the Industrial Revolution, such as communism, fascism. Wait, wait, wait. Authoritarianism is always cool among intellectuals since it allows them to match themselves. Sort of wait. Anti authoritarian movements almost always spring from academia. That's the reason why cracking down on professors in academia are one of the first things all authoritarians do. 
you're projecting a little bit, my Deuterino here. You're cracking down on um on uh, academics is literally like one of the day one things that authoritarians do. Fascism and the various fads that have passed all failed. I'm not reading all of this. No, no, stop, stop. Learn to write video essays. I understand you have trillions of completely uncoordinated thoughts that you just have to vomit out into this video. I know that all of them are going to be as stupid as the shit that I've been listening to. I am not pausing to read. I don't care. I know that whatever is contained here is dumb. In the positions of power, which example of this is human nature is inherently changeable and all disparities can be solved. A great example of this comes with disparity. Oh my god! He believes that if there's any disparity, it must be the consequence of oppression. This ignores how immense disparities are the norm across almost every field you can think of. For example, every single one of the 20 tallest mountains in the world is in Asia. Or alternatively, what? the Germans ended up being the top piano manufacturers for all of history. The idea that oppression is the cause of almost every social factor is silly when you look at the horrifically legally repressed Chinese in Indonesia, who what? own 71% of the country's economy, while also only being 3% of the population. What? 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 Were we talking about the height of mountains? Also, if I had to guess, I would probably say that Han Chinese people do well in Southeast Asia because China is the largest economic power in the region and has a population of 1.4 billion people. I'm just going to guess that probably has a pretty positive effect on their hegemony. It's just a guess that I have. I don't know. In short, you can't find a single statistic that isn't incredibly power law distributed. Take the what? gender pay gap in which the average woman makes 76 cents for the average man, which has effectively been the rallying cry for the modern feminist movement. However, once you account for children, women actually make more money. Likewise, once... Ex what? Account... Wait, what does that mean to account for children? Wait, what? Like for like, pay gap between women and men, percent of women's wages. Pay gap for all jobs. Jobs at the same level. Wait, why would you account for that? Jobs at the same level? Like, wait, why? So, hey, it turns out that if you, uh, fa if you account for the factors that cause the wage gap, the wage gap goes away. If you, guys, you're, you're not going to believe this. If you, if you ignore, if you specifically counteract the factors that cause the wage gap, the wage gap goes away. If you can believe it. If you can even imagine such a thing. Experience and hours. Also, this doesn't even mention children. This is just talking about jobs at the same level, same company, same company level and function. This doesn't even mention kids. I don't even know where he got that. Work is accounted for. You find it shrinks to 96 cents for every dollar. Social justice believes. Also, 96 cents to every dollar is still 4% less pay than men, meaning that if a man makes $50,000 a year, you would make 2,000 less. That's $2,000 per year you're not getting. Imagine if a company just explicitly gave like $2,000 bonuses to every man on there. Even after you account for all those other factors, the problem is still there. All hierarchies are inherently oppressive and hierarchies based on actual skills and ability are all evil. An example of this what? is that- What? 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 Hierarchies based on ability are one of the things that people on the left almost universally support. Okay. When Western businesses go to third world countries and pay workers there wages lower than first world countries, it's called oppressive. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, some might, some might say that, possibly. Companies almost always pay higher wages than the local economy does, and are paying the wages that are allowed at the lower productivity levels in the third world. So, we actually did research. The lower productivity levels thing is not true. In many manufacturing plants across the developing world where we pay people like dirt poor, they are just as economically productive. It's just, a, this is just racism right here. This is just like, they're, they're brown and therefore less productive. The only way in which you could say they're less productive is if you factor in their productivity as a portion of their contribution to the economy, which is smaller than America's per capita. So that's kind of like saying they should be paid less because they're less productive because they're paid less because they're less productive. It's... <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, I would say that paying a little more than the local minimum wage is still oppressive, actually. That's just an opinion of mine. Yet another example is how social justice treats the natural hierarchies like teacher and student or parent and child as oppressive. Modern left-wing doctrine says teachers- Wait, how is teacher-student a natural hierarchy? Even parent and child is sort of a, a fudgy one anthropologically, but okay. Teacher-student? The natural hierarchy? I didn't realize, do we, do we have genes for that?
should defer to what students want as much as possible and parents should listen to their child's whims even when in most circumstances the parents and teachers are wiser and not letting them teach their pupils makes those pupils worse off i like the 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 ambiguity of the language here all he said was like teachers should listen to their students which yeah you should listen to people you're teaching obviously that helps you teach them better and you should also like yeah try to form a healthy relationship with your child and not treat them like a little baby slave yeah like okay like most parenting experts will teach that not just like super woke people but like pretty much everyone says this Letting your child or student do whatever they want is actively harming them in the long whatever term. Whatever they isn't enforcing discipline so they can't internalize the self-control that would allow them to thrive and hold society together. However, social justice doesn't believe in real knowledge, love, or hierarchies of skill. Love? <laughs> doesn't believe in knowledge or love? I, uh, I didn't realize the modern left was a Final Fantasy villain. I see. When do we when do we approach our final form where we decide that we are we are become one with entropy and we consume the planet into a black hole? What the fuck is he talking about? With the only force in the world being cynical power games, think of how many schools don't teach real historical dates, for example, which means no real history actually ends up getting taught. Or how many parents? What, what? I've I've ne I've never I've never heard that. The actual specific dates also are not the most important parts of history. Even remotely? A at all? I don't remember the specific dates of almost anything. The history... Hi history is not just the dates. That's like the weirdest, stupidest, most no-child-left-behind, means-tested attitude towards education imaginable. Their kids act like demons, screaming or acting like spoiled brats, which will hold them back in the future at some point. Why? Because they won't learn to be polite and considerate. Where, where is Social this? justice starts with the assumption that all humans... Wait, I'm sorry. I thought SJWs were the ones who controlled their kids and projected all their political desires onto them. Aren't SJWs the ones who have kids who they like indoctrinate into SJW ideology? Which which one is it? Do we, do SJWs let them do whatever? Just, I, I hate it when SJWs uh, like drift while driving on highways and they don't use their turn signals. I hate that part of SJW ideology. This guy cannot stop with the like rage typing PowerPoint slide additions so like blank pawns that are interchangeable completely ignoring all historic and cultural factors and a purposeful stupidity for example in psychological studies we've found men tend to be more interested in things and women and people this explains why say this youtube channel has turned out to be <laughs> yeah we know we know 96 percent male or engineers and craftsmen are heavily male Likewise, why women are in psychiatry, medicine, and childcare more than men. This so, he's saying that science has found that men are more interested in things and women more interested in people. And to support this, he's using post-socialization data. Is it possible that social expectations might significantly affect what fields people want to get into? I mean, by this point, all these people are adults, you know? Like, they've been pretty heavily informed by social biases. Do we acknowledge the existence of sociology as a concept? I have plenty of arguments in favor of this. It's pretty easy to prove. This isn't due to oppression, since this trend is most pronounced in the most gender-equal societies like Scandinavia or Israeli kibbutzes. Well but less gender-equal societies have more... Wait. Does he think Saudi Arabia has more male-female job-sharing responsibilities than the West does? Wait, 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 wait. The most gender equal societies like Scandinavia or Israeli kibbutzes. Left wing. He does. Wait, he just sees this and he sees this happening in countries that are relatively gender equal like Norway. And he's like, ah, so it's the most divergent here. Whereas in, in countries like Iran, surely there's more of an equal representation. <laughs> this is great. I'm so glad we chose to watch this. In the most gender equal societies like Scandinavia or Israeli kibbutzes. Left wingers think that human nature is inherently malleable, which it largely isn't. Although. Okay. It's a pretty, pretty easy point to falsify. Um, I'm pretty sure the vast majority of psychological research indicates that people's predilections are heavily determined by social influence. But. Okay. Nurture does have big effects, so does nature. This leads to the left-wing obsession with controlling the dis- Oh yeah, Iran actually does have a lot of women scientists and engineers, but if you take a broad stratified look at their society and which jobs people are led into, without- with some exceptions, like, the idea that this is not present in countries with more explicit gender divides is not true. Or telling people what words they can and can't say, or with controlling pop culture. 
For a person who believes that humans aren't in control of objective reality, understanding objective truth and how to deal with it is the most important thing, since what? it allows us to deal with an ever-changing and complicated world. Thus, freedom of speech... It's called the gender equality paradox, and it's based off some shaky science. Finding his various gender differences, personality, occupation, larger, more gender equal countries. Larger differences are found in big five personality traits, dark triad traits, self-esteem, depression. Same the paradoxical. Various explanations of the paradox. So some more stereotypes, gender expectation, more responsible. Women less developed are more likely to choose uh, STEM fields. Other theorize deeply rooted in intrinsic gender reasons. Oh, I guess it's possible. Yeah. It doesn't really change the underlying argument that I have, which is that socialization will affect a lot of this stuff. But um, girls perform similar or better than boys. Damn, I can't believe boys are stupider than girls. It's crazy. Separate Harvard researchers were unable to recreate the data reported in the study, and then a correction was issued in the original paper. Wait, what? Okay, oh, cool. Uh, study by this. Data found the paradox gender equality could be entirely explained by the stereotype associating math to men being stronger and more egalitarian in developed societies. Wouldn't this be an argument in favor of social construction and the malleability of human nature? Uh, uh, yeah one thing at a time must be protected since it allows societies to look for the truth most effectively however from the social justice viewpoint that humans construct human nature controlling how people think allows humans to be able to engineer our nature anyone who reads any history knows that human nature stays the same no matter what people believe i think we have another eu4 player here my friends if that's the case then why are there isis ins insurgents in syria and gay people in america like what what the conditions that you grow up in are obviously going to determine your behavior, beliefs, and preferences. Like, inarguably. I think the argument he's about to make is like, this is going to be like the strong men, weak men, society, blah de blah Right? Like, uh, no matter what, uh, great societies fall because people become weak, or like whatever fourth grade misinterpretation of historical analysis he wants to engage in. People can scream at the top of their lungs that their ideology or religion will abolish cruelty and corruption, but once that group gets into power, their elite, unless given incentive structures against those things, will perpetuate them. And wait, I agree with that. So create the incentive structures. That's how we got rid of slavery. That's how we got rid of... Wait, this guy said he's in favor of the Civil Rights Act. Wait, this has already happened. The, the idea that groups have taken power and then made the world a better place, progressively, that's, that's already happened. Alt History Hub is in YouTube chat. Oh, all history hub. Don't worry. You don't need to burn any bridges, okay? I'll just assume that you denounce this nonsense. <laughs> this is so bad. It's really, really bad. Oh, God. I hope I can talk with this guy, you know? It really... It really... it re Oh, all history hub says, I read history and have never come with that conclusion, lol. Yeah, I, this guy's like Dunning-Kruger personified. He doesn't seem malicious to me, so I'd like to have a conversation with him, but... Yeah, I don't know. Here. In fact, the people who are often most dangerous are those that believe themselves to be good, since they have no protections against their own evil. When a social justice- Everyone in power thinks themselves to be good. Wait, wouldn't that be a counter-argument to his point? Right now, he's saying that the propensity for people to engage in malicious behavior is affected by the degree to which they're self-assured. But that's an element of human nature being affected by- Okay, no, this is completely incoherent. Just- person screams at you for saying the wrong I'm not words. reading. They think that you are allowing racism to perpetuate I'm and not reading. gradually engineering the human race to superiority. This is very convenient for them since controlling the discourse like Hollywood or school board curriculums is very easy while well, they continue to eschew actually effective real world measures. We already you saw this. Black America, trade schools, improved education, more effective communities and stable families. Wait, fun fact, 90% of homeless people come from fatherless homes. Wait, isn't that an indication? That social forces and environmental circumstances might determine p the outcomes? Possibly? Maybe? <laughs> Maybe there's a correlation between factors which lead to fatherless homes and factors which lead to homelessness? I don't know if this stat's true, by the way. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not true. But there is a correlation. However, not a single modern social justice government is pushing for measures like that. I mean, just look at- Wh Wait. Trade schools, improved education, more effective communities, and stable families. However, not a single modern social justice government is pushing for measures like that. Source. Image of crack pipe. What? What? Ah, uh, uh, yes. Left-leaning people have never tried to implement welfare states. To, to, to do things. <laughs> I mean, just look at defund the police, where even though police departments are often corrupt and- I thought we were talking about the government. The, the defund the police movement was just a loud part of the BLM group.
really inhumane things, the number of unarmed black men who are killed by the police is actually relatively small, and weakening the police actually results in far more black deaths because it increases black on black crime, which is a far higher number. Is there any evidence for that fact? I noticed that the claim he made that weakening the police leads to more black on black crime is uh, suspiciously not evident here. Also, I still notice that black people are disproportionately affected up here. Like, I don't know how that changes anything. I'm looking. I don't see any evidence of that claim. Do you just think that? Is that just a thing? Ah, oh, yes, here you go. This whole fucking video, dude. Social justice makes the weird logical jump that all disparities in racial income must come from racism today. This ignores that, first of all, let's... I, I can't, I can't, I, the audacity of this mother throwing up text walls. The audacity. He doesn't do this in his other videos, I bet. He's just very invested in this one. Say the difference between African American and white incomes is caused by many factors, including racism, but also he does? Oh, he does? In Africa, oh, geography, oh. And historical chance. To say that deconstructing modern racism would help negate all of that history is insane. What? what? But also factors starting in Africa, geography, culture, and history. Starting in Africa? What factors, pray tell, starting in Africa would affect black people? What, what do you mean by that? I just want to know, because I'm curious. What do you mean by that? Historical chance. To say that deconstructing modern racism would help negate all of that history is insane. Who, wait. People on the left aren't time lords. Wait, who, who's saying deconstructing modern racism will warp time backwards to undo i can't kings and generals in chat we have the whole alt history club in chat right now what's up guys i i love your videos you too i mean not the video i'm watching this guy's got uh some takes i'm trying i'm trying to like light touch this a little bit but like this guy's confidence in his perspective is insane it's it just it reminds me of those people who have like seven YouTube subs and they post two hour long videos every day because they're confident that they've discovered a mathematical equation that will unite like quantum physics and general relativity and like nobody's taking them seriously. And if you listen to their videos, they're clearly just incomprehensibly crazy, but like they're very, very, very convinced that it's just no one's able to listen to them because, yeah. Something the movement always ignores is that if you look at an ethnic breakdown of income by groups in America, it's clear that America is not primarily based off oppression. British Americans are what? Are the lower end of income among white Americans. Well, the highest earners are some of the most oppressed groups like Asians and Jews. Wh what? I don't know. I don't know if this is JQ signaling or whatever. The idea that some ethnic groups have higher average income and some have lower average income. This is the case in every country on earth. What does this have to do with whether or not there's oppression? You see big fluctuations inside the black community with descendants of immigrants from the Caribbean and black people whose ancestors were free before the civil war being much richer than the rest of the black community. Similarly, among Hispanic- Dude, that's, that's crazy. People who are recent immigrants from countries who had the wealth to immigrate to America and also people who weren't slaves might be doing better than the people who were slaves and at groups race has nothing to do with also yeah what is this chart anglo-saxon is anglo-saxu okay wealth the mostly white puerto ricans are much poorer than the darker skinned mexicans or dominicans social justice theory believes okay. in this thing called intersectionality which holds that there's this underlying oppressive structure to society that oppresses women gay people ethnic minorities etc all at the same time N no Intersectionality is just the idea that different forms of social oppression are related and that they intersect with each other, hence the term, uh, so that forms of oppression uh, can be described through the relationship between these factors as well as their individual forces, uh, you know, in isolation. And once we remove it, oppression will be gone. They take this from Marxism. What? Wait, we want to remove intersectionality? structure to society that oppresses women, gay people, ethnic minorities, etc., all at the same time. And once we remove it, oppression will be gone. Well, it is true that if we believed there was one oppressive structure that oppressed all people, and then we got rid of it, that oppression would be gone. That's kind of tautological, right? They take this from Marxism, which has the utopian no. idea that once the capitalists are gone, the world will be rich and the working classes will live in plenty. But both are conspiracy theories. The idea that getting rid of an oppressive element in society was invented by Marx. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. 
saying that there's this secret cultural force I'm not that is secretly causing all of this oppression around the world without any reference to its own self-interest and only indirect proof that it exists literally fits the definition. What? Oh, okay. So this guy is one of the people who thinks that oppression means that there's like a dark, shadowy cabal of people who sit in an unlit room smoking cigars and make all the oppression happen secretly for fun. Um, this is one of the common misreadings of the idea that we live in a patriarchy. The idea that there is literally like a group of people called the patriarchs, like the Illuminati, who do this for funsies. You know, this is obviously a deeply stupid way of understanding how oppression works. This guy opened the video by literally talking about how he he supported the civil rights movement and the gay rights movement. Like he 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 opened this video by saying that like those were also levels of intersectional oppression. Like he doesn't understand how the denunciations he's making right now would apply to literally all forms of fighting back against social ill definition of conspiracy theory. The good way to look for conspiracy theories is that they string a bunch of factions together into a black or white worldview. Yeah, let's ignore the massive differences inside the black or white community or men and women and create these binaries. What? Wait, what? But intersectionality does the opposite. Intersectionality is explicitly about breaking those binaries by introducing a complex tapestry of interwoven... Okay. One of the defining features of social justice is that it formed due to a confluence of different academic departments shoehorned together under the common alliance of intersectionality. Let me do the brief oh, as possible rundown of each of these schools. The first is queer theory, which is the most oh, postmodern no. and believes that human sexual- Oh no, no, now he's going to start naming off the things that he thinks he understands. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay. So here we have the gender unicorn, which was produced by the Trans Student Equality Resources. Uh, aka transstudent.org slash gender, an organization so small that the name of the person who designed the chart is down in the bottom left, instead of it being sort of abstracted in a corporate entity kind of way. But okay, let's, let's move forward with this being the representation for all queer theory. This is fine, by the way. Duality and gender is built off oppressive social structures rather than being a Darwinistic necessity, which is built off ensuring the survival of the human race. What, 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 what? postmodern and believes that human sexuality and gender is built off oppressive social structures rather than being a Darwinistic human sexuality is based off uh, necessity which is built off ensuring the survival of the human race can we follow through on that how can, can we substantiate that it purports the theory of a gender spectrum that is entirely without scientific evidence as a starting point <laughs> you know when a kid just keeps on asking you why and then why again and then why and feels really smart once you can't answer the fifth why that's queer analysis, which tries to break every... All this guy's admitting to right now is that he would be owned in a debate by a five-year-old. That the Socratic method would bring this guy to his knees. Which, hey, has been happening a lot lately in conversations that I have. ...concept down into logical salami slicing into irrelevance. An example I gave a friend is when we were on vacation together in a log cabin, is that the queer analysis would try to break down how the act of us being in a cabin really meant nothing and was inherently oppressive. Then there's post-colonial... What? 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 What 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 point was proven there? Colonial theory, which largely exists to blame all the failures of post-colonial countries on European colonization, ignoring any other factors, and even saying that we wait, weren't we talking about queer theory? This guy never finishes a point. Every time this guy just talks about anything that's on his mind. Did he write this script? Was this live recorded? And he just like cut out the 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 breaths taken or like the po like no point is made here he doesn't go premise premise conclusion this is just like stream of consciousness then there's postcolonial theory which largely exists to oh, blame all the failures of postcolonial countries on european colonization ignoring any other factors and even saying that we should respect magical ways of thinking on a similar wavelength of thinking about modern science source just anything any source at all Anything? We just have a photo of people in masks and we're just going to say that? Okay. Yes. Even reaching points like the West trying to promulgate education in the colonies. Oh, I also like how he says magical ways of thinking when all we have here is just like, I'm assuming tribal cultural garb. Like, oh yeah, I'm sure these, you know, foreigners don't r believe in science. I can tell because they're wearing their traditional garb. Would you assume that a, that like an Anglo-Saxon didn't believe in science because they were wearing a kilt and like a tunic? Both articles of clothing that were worn before the formation of the scientific method? Okay. Modern science. Even reaching points like the West trying to promulgate education in the colonies or anthropologically study local cultures in a scientific way was cultural imperialism. Okay. By 
anthropologically study local populations in a scientific way while referring to, I'm assuming here, Africa. What exactly do you mean by that? In a scientific way, I'm, I'm very interested. I am extremely interested in, uh, in knowing what he, what he means there. I would be, I would be delighted to know. After that is African and Latino studies, which rather than actually studying those cultures with any curiosity, turn them into grievance programs, which largely blame Western civilization for every failing in those societies, ah. which in its own way becomes its own form of racism that prevents these people from having any agency outside of the white man's story. Women's uh -huh. studies works exactly the same, except replacing women for ethnic minorities and men for white people. You have the body shaming and ableism movement, which don't have academic departments, but are more widespread in social justice as a culture. In this is, this is just is throw everything at the wall. None of this means anything. There's no relationship between any of these variables. The ableism movement? Are we against the concept of like ramps for people with wheelchairs? What, what, is that social justice? That is social justice, by the way. Unironically, that is a form of social justice. In the broader social sphere, the body shaming movement's really negative and that it tells fat people it isn't their fault and it's society's fault for not saying. Wait, what is, what is a body shaming movement? Oh yeah, I'm the ableism movement. What, wait, what, what does he mean? Is he, is he saying, uh, what movement is he trying to talk about? He doesn't even know the terms in, involved here. Is he talking about the, uh, possibly anti-body shaming or fat positivity or body positivity? Just any term? Nobody calls it the body shaming movement. <laughs> What's this? Yeah. Ah, yes. This lady right here. I'm, I think, I think she's probably a proud member of the body shaming movement. <laughs> fat people are pretty however even though they're their fault and it's society's the body shaming movement's really negative and that it tells fat people it isn't their fault and it's society wait hold on that is explicitly not true fat positive people do not go around saying shit like it's not our fault because if they did that they would imply that there's something wrong with the way they are so completely talking out their ass here there are fat people who will say it's not their fault and sometimes it's not there can be genetic conditions or there are systemic conditions institutional but the body positivity movement doesn't say that fault for not saying fat people are pretty however even though there is culture uh not not really cultural fluctuation beauty standards are genetically driven and based off darwinist Ooh, yeah i don't know uh we we uh my 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 alarm bells are ringing a little bit just a smidge if if you know what i mean let's go even though there is cultural fluctuation, beauty standards are genetically driven and based off Darwinistic fitness. Mm -hmm. At the same time, being fat is objectively unhealthy. Even though our society puts out unhealthy body expectations, going the opposite- So, being fat, depending on how fat you are, is not objectively unhealthy? There's pretty clear research on this. The healthiest- like, you're not only healthy if you're 6% body fat. There's a lot of variability with acceptable levels of being fat, you know? Oh, oh! Just general standard, okay? Health is determined by a bunch of, like, factors, but, okay, a skinny dude who doesn't eat that good and doesn't exercise is almost always going to be less healthy than a person who's kind of pudgy but does, like, regular, like, moderate exercise or light walks or whatever. Like, overwhelmingly so, massively so. A ton of health is, like, how your insides are, are a chugging, you know? Not just how much weight you're carrying. Your body is strong enough, assuming that you work out and that you take decent care of yourself, to to carry 30 or 40 extra pounds on your body that's just not a big deal for a human body uh if it was then there wouldn't be so much height and frame variance in human beings because we all have the same fundamental bone structure you know like obviously we have to be able to accommodate greater weights opposite direction is just stupid it's so depressing to see a generation of young women being fat badly put together and spewing anti <laughs> badly put together dude if you're having trouble dating all right i have a solution to you okay and the solution can be found in whatever you could. The solution can be found in your YouTube viewership demographics, okay? Okay, you gotta look at that. You gotta wonder. Also, wait, what's wrong with this? Wait, what? I, I guess they're chubby? I, okay, okay, all right. I mean, you know, uh, elbows too pointy. I get it. Female feminist propaganda, and then wondering <laughs> why they're lonely and no one will marry them. They've been sold an image of the world that's just not true. The ableist. I, by the way, I love the cope from people who are like, the, the, the pro body positivity feminazi propaganda has led to legions of fat women who will never get married will die alone. When there's like no data providing evidence for that at all. The idea that there's just this lost generation of women who can't get laid is, isn't true. People in general are marrying later or marrying less, but it's not like a fat woman thing. They're just projecting. 
movement also says that people with physical disabilities aren't actually disabled. It's just society's fault for not recognizing them as normal. I've never heard anyone say that. I think I've seen one person in chat say that. Nobody says that. It would be good if society made it easier on the disabled, many of whom are veterans that have sacrificed for their nations, but... <laughs> This guy, this guy claims he's like a libertarian or what? People in chat were saying this guy's a libertarian, but he has to be like the brave troops, you know? This philosophy is pushed to horrifying extremes. An example of which is the... Ah, uh, here we go. The, 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 the academic uh, research of the TikTok. TikTok mental health influencers who pretend to have mental illnesses in order to get attention. How do you know they're pretending? Out of curiosity. Just how do you know? Can you prove that? This in turn has caused a spike in large problems due to the glorification oh, we of can't. mental nope, illnesses. Which on. means lots of Gen Z kids pretend to have mental illnesses in order to look cool. The final part of the social justice coalition's environment. What does that have to do with disabilities? I don't know, man. And also, this is kind of hypocritical, okay? I don't know if this guy making this video is pretending to be or if he actually is But the fact that I can't tell and he can't tell for those people on TikTok means that, like, I don't know. It just seems like it's a weird argument to make. Environmentalism, which is honestly one of my soft spots of the movement. Global warming is an existential threat that we really need to get on, and nature is beautiful and ought to be preserved, and the right should Aww. be blamed more than the left for often just not caring, but Aww. the social justice attempt at climate change just isn't effective. Uh. You know what would help us turn away from carbon energy sources? Nuclear energy, and even more investment into nuclear research, which would allow these reactors to be far more efficient. My understanding is that people on the left tend to be pretty in favor of nuclear energy. It's usually liberals who aren't, but again, he's used social justice movement as the broadest fucking descriptor in the universe so however the social justice movement has always been the group against nuclear energy like no there were groups in, of environmentalists who were against it but the loudest voices were like nimby types weren't they the types of people who are protesting against nuclear energy the most aggressively in the west the largest group are usually just sort of regular moderate or maybe center left p i'm pretty sure there's been research on this but the idea that it was just like the social justice movement also didn't the social justice movement come about in the 1990s according to this guy the protests against the nuclear power plants were before that I, okay but all right <sighs> Likewise, the best way to lower carbon emissions would be to replace coal with natural gas, but the social justice wing has continually blocked policy supporting natural gas. What? Wait, what? what? That's a SJW line? We don't want natural gas to be used over coal? Natural gas is slightly better, yeah. I have it sped up a little bit, Rainbow. Thus, in fact, social justice has hurt the environment far more than helping it. Ah. What do all these threats have in common? Well, first of all, they hold that whatever oppressed group they're supposed to protect has no agency. In their view, the only way ethnic minorities, women, gay people, etc., can be helped is by concessions from the broader society. In real terms... Rejection? Also, wait, those aren't... Those aren't the same thing. So, the only way that the slaves in America could be helped is to get the non-slaves to abolish slavery. Whether you do that through violence or whether you do that through, like, protest or whatever else, a concession on the part of the non-slaves was a necessary way of overcoming that. But that's not saying that you don't ascribe any agency to the slaves. That just means that you recognize the things that they need are things that the majority power groups have the power to give. Those are not mutually exclusive. Telling people that they're helpless is the worst thing possible. No one says Even that. Even groups under horrifically oppressive conditions like the Jews, Asian Americans, or women in strongly patriarchal societies have been able to find ways to thrive in certain forms. O okay. Yeah. And and black people in America. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Wait. What does that What does that have to do with anything? What? Yeah. Yes. Oppressed people can find ways to thrive. That doesn't mean they're not oppressed. I'm not blaming the press for not doing more, but fatalism is the worst thing possible and not even true. No one's In fact, fatal. social justice treats having initiative as morally wrong. What? I remember when J.D. Vance released his book Hillbilly Elegy about how he pulled himself out of poverty in Appalachia, it was widely hated since it was supposedly giving poor Americans false hope. There are so many think people- No. It was because framing poverty as something which can only be overcome by working real extra deck, extra super heroic. duper hard bootstraps argument is bad. Not because it gave people false hope. Yeah, wasn't J.D. Vance born into a wealthy family? Yeah, okay. Stories, whether Batman, Hercules, or the like, are oppressive since it encourages people to act and take initiative. I what? Mean, what? We're, we're, what? Are, what? Hercules, or the like, are oppressive since it encourages people to act and take initiative. What? Where? Can we substantiate this criticism? What? Just any, just say anything. Say everything. 
I made a video here about how envy influences the social justice movement, and I can really see that, especially in this part of it. To take something from that video, as social media distorts our view of reality, it makes envy more powerful. People see people more attractive than them and those that are doing better in general. And if you look at who social justice attacks, whether the wealthy white men, and especially with cancel culture, canceling celebrities or successful ancestors that we could possibly be envious against. Successful? Wait, BLM types dislike like the founding fathers because they're envious of their success ah yes i i i wish i had wooden teeth they were very successful at owning slaves i guess then you can clearly see that the movement is driven in large part by envy uh -huh. similarly that no change is possible in the past but all the change in the world we should have had this up the, the whole time africana departments like to say racism is as bad today as the 1960s yet segregation is gone where 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 <laughs> America's had a black president and an extremely disproportionate amount of American cultural figures are black. How can women be oppressed? Okay. How can women be oppressed when women star in like 98% of porn? Okay. Here's the, that's the question I got for you. Oh my God, dude, black people have their, uh, have their media heavily commodified for popular consumption by white people. That's crazy. No way we have racism then. Would I get would I get in trouble if I made a joke about Drake being white anyway? So many people on Twitter make jokes about him being like gay. I feel like I can get away with it. Can I do that? Can I can I can I is is that fine? Is no 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 it's no it's okay. No, it's all right. He's Canadian. Well, you can't be Canadian and black. However, these departments act as if any changes are possible in the future, totally remaking society through social engineering if they're given power. Uh -huh. And finally, you can totally see the self-serving and irrational nature of social justice through how it treats the rest of the world. What? Feminist activists in America never talk about the worst treated women in the world. Source. Dude, I made it up. Okay. Again, I've told you, this is the theme of this video, okay? This guy doesn't know a lot of things, so he assumes that no one knows those things, but he's the only one who knows that nobody knows those things. Namely in the Islamic world in Africa. At the same time, social justice ignores horrible humanitarian crises around the world, like the genocide of the Rohingya in Myanmar, just only- What? What? The social justice move- I- I'm sorry, I- The social justice move- again, this is what, like, how many people are in this movement exactly? focusing upon the western world i mean there are more slaves in the world now than there were in 1800 and a lot of them go in supply chains to make the stuff that we use and you never hear supposed anti-slavery if only there were more people out there making arguments about how morally bad it is that people are essentially forced into slavery as part of the commodity supply chains we rely upon I can't believe this video is real, man. This video is a goddamn trip. The advocates talk about them. And finally, they all ignore class, which I think is a tragedy since class is a- I thought they were all Marxists. Legitimately big problem in our modern society. This is the era of the least meritocracy in American history. The highest inequality, as an example, 60% of the students in the top 20 American universities are from the 1% of wealthiest families. Social justice does lip service to class, but they treat all white people, even the ones who grew up in grinding poverty, of which there's a big number, as upper class in their worldview. Can I, can I get the crack pipe? Hold on. We need, hold on. We need to make some edits to this. <clears throat> we need to create a dot .png. Crack pipe. Da, 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 Whoa. Da, 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 Good enough. Da, 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 da. Whoa. Da, 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 Whoa. Da, 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 Whoa. Da, 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 I got my hash pipe. That's an okay song when it's being sung by somebody capable of singing, and also a person who's actually trying. All right, export PNG, save, delete layer information, open new image uh, over here, and perfect. There we go. All right, now we're ready to continue. None of social justice's policies target the many problems the lower class face or do real world policies that would help the lower classes. Uh -huh. In fact, they end up True. opposing policies that help the working classes, like shutting down immigration and constructing tariffs. I think it's. Shut it. The left. The left shut down immigration. 
and constructed tariffs. What? 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 Where? There we go. Now we're staying high. It's the greatest irony that they ignore the largest injustice. Wait, oh, they're saying that we should support it? Hold on. Any problems the lower class face or do real world policies that would help the lower classes. In fact, they end up opposing policies that help the working classes, like shutting down immigration and constructing tariffs. Ah, gotcha. Okay, so implementing tariffs will not reduce poverty and shutting down immigration also doesn't so i think it's the greatest irony that they ignore the largest injustice of our times and i don't think it's a coincidence in that this uh -huh. movement is concentrated among the college educated upper and middle classes uh -huh. the, West the question suicide. that we face at this point is that mm. if social justice clearly makes no sense and you've got to remember this is a movement with some of the smartest people in the country in it why are people incentivized to believe in it what uh -huh. in our society makes us liable to this mass delusion before World War I, for better or for worse, the West was powered off a combination of Christianity, capitalism, nationalism, white supremacy, and science. However, the world wars were so traumatic. I love identifying people who play 4X games, man. Holy shit. Anyone who... If you ever made a statement like that in a history class, you would be immediately beaten to death by the uh, history professor. So this is, ver this is very much a... My, the West civilization maximized these... <laughs> these values. The West is still in a massive hangover and a horrifying reaction. World War I was an evil and terrible war, fought between nations that were pretty similar and highly developed, but showed uh -huh. that even after centuries of progress, barbarity lay beneath the facade of civilization. Uh -huh. This was further reinforced when the Germans, supposedly one of the most civilized nations in the world, committed one of the worst atrocities of all time in World War II. Even the good guys in the war, the Americans, killed millions of people while using the most horrifying weapon of all time. This okay. meant that the West is going through a crisis of confidence that we're currently living through. If the West could still perpetuate all these horrifying barbarisms in the world wars, how could it claim any moral superiority, and how could it claim its progress had any meaning? All what? America didn't experience a crisis of self-confidence after World War II. We experienced the greatest boom in American exceptionalism that happened since our expansion westward. Amer after World War II, America took its place as the world superpower, and we were at our most confident and our most dogmatically nationalistic in all of history. What is he talking about? There's no relationship between reality. I'm not reading it! Although capitalism, science, and Christianity resulted in- Oh, do I have to? People are normally shocked when I say Christianity resulted in real world moral advances. The historiography tends to be biased against Christianity. Christianity ended slavery in dark age Europe and also drove for early human rights. Yeah, I could tell this guy was religious from the video of him at the beginning, okay? It's not hard. It's not hard to figure out. Barbarity lay beneath or the, the very least religiously oriented. This was further reinforced from the Germans. Americans killed me. If the West could still perpetuate all these horrifying barbarisms in the world wars, how could it claim any moral superiority and how could it claim its progress had any meaning? Although capitalism, science, and Christianity resulted in countless real-world advances and progresses, since they were used to justify the horrors that were the world wars, they were treated as if they were fundamentally evil. When you look at the group that really got with social- Ah, yes. I remember how America reacted to its participation in the World War II. It's, it said, it said, we're evil, actually. Yes, that was how America thought of itself after the, the end of World War II. <laughs> justice and made it popular it was the baby boomers or the children of the world war ii generation that largely tried to react against everything their parents stood for you can easily predict social justice philosophy based off what's the opposite of the nazis where the nazis were racist against non-whites nationalistic militaristic and misogynistic meanwhile social justice is the opposite or racist against white people says the nation is evil is toxically besties and says gender doesn't exist but still hates men so guys social justice is the opposite of the nazis but that's a bad thing. You have, you have to understand. We've gone too far in being the opposite of the Nazis. Nazis were so evil that people wanted to do the opposite afterwards. But truth be told, you can't just have two dots in your moral framework. And trying to do the opposite of anything to a ludicrous degree just brings out another evil. Uh -huh. The social uh -huh. justice philosophy gradually got put in place and reached its climax as boomers were in power for longer and longer. And were thus able to enact their worldviews. In short terms, the world war... Wait, he's saying the boomers are the ones who pushed for the postmodern social justice movement? Wait. He's claiming right now that the boomers are the ones who pushed for the This is incredible. This is this is absolutely incredible. This is this is astonishing. This is this is rare. I'm really happy that I just on a whim decided to watch this because this isn't this isn't regular dipshit alt history, you know, uh memery. This is this is something special, okay?
wars were so traumatic that it resulted in the West trying to commit suicide, which is social justice. Uh -huh. Saying that social justice is a suicidal impulse will be controversial, but it really shouldn't be. Uh -huh. SJWs literally say that Western civilization, whiteness, are evil hierarchies that have to be ripped apart. They sure. say whiteness is evil and try to increase diversity as a moral good, as if decreasing the Western or whiteness of an organization would make it better. Sure. They openly hate and try to destroy all the pillars of Western society, whether or not they're positive such as science, capitalism, freedoms like speech, and Christianity. They go even further. When sure, man. <sighs> to deconstruct any stabilizing force in society, whether the family, relations between the sexes, loyalty to higher authority, or property rights. The relativism and unthinking hatred of the West and social justice is disgusting. Mm -hmm. This is literally the movement where feminists are allied with Islamic radicals due to their shared hatred of the West. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the moral relativism in which any criticism of foreign societies is matched by the often ludicrous comparison to the West. Africa is corrupt and China's authoritarian, but so is America, they'd say, not realizing how wrong they are. What? The fact that people are actively breaking the law and often going on horrifying journeys to reach Western countries while the reverse never happens suggests that the West is doing pretty well as of now. This meme does a better job of breaking down social justice's suicidal impulse than anything I could say. If a white person moves out, white flight. Ah, I see. The, he finds it convincing because the language and the formatting is a meme which is meant to be understandable to a middle schooler. Moves out white flight? No. Not all instances of a person moving out is white flight at all. That's not what that means. The definition of white flight is not if a person moves out of their house when they're white. Moves in. Gentrification. No. You can move into places. It's fine. Sees color? What, sees it? Like, perceives it with your optical nerves? That means you're racist, I guess? Doesn't see it means you're ignoring racism. If you can't see color, does that mean you're, like, blind? This is ableism right here. That's bad, okay? Doesn't partake in culture. Non-inclusive racism. Ah, yes. M many a story have been told of the people who don't partake in culture. Is it, Who does this refer to? Kaczynski? What, are, like, mountain men? What? Engages in culture. Cultural appropriation. And that one leads to me, because I'm now below that box. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking too much. <sighs> this shows how every single action a white person could do is racist. The only thing a white person could possibly do to not sin is to support their cause and give them more power. The social justice movement has been so successful since in the vacuum of belief that came after the world wars crushed our previous moral pillars, social justice was simply just loud and there was no moral push back to work. Chat, I will check out the links in a second, okay? The funny thing is, he's insistent on saying that modern social justice is a product of the disillusionment we felt after the Second World War, which is really weird because we didn't feel any. It was the Vietnam War. Does he know about the Vietnam War? The Vietnam War and the protests against it led to the general tumultuous social period of the 1960s, or at least contributed to it, and that was the origin of most modern progressive movements. Most modern progressive movements directly stem from political sentiments which emerged following the Vietnam War. I don't know why he's saying World War II, yeah, he probably doesn't know the Vietnam War uh, exists because there's no, like, there's no grand strategy game that lets you play out a campaign where you conquer and hold territory in Vietnam yet. Listen, he plays Call of Duty games, okay? Yeah, he, he plays Hearts of Iron, and that one's not there, okay? We, ha we don't have the whole Vietnam War conquest pack. Work against them. Thus, those with scruples push aside those without in the disorganized opposition. Similarly, every vehicle of cultural output like education and media, or the people who could formulate arguments against social justice were heavily leftist. At the same time, social justice played- What? Position. Similarly, every vehicle of cultural output like education and media, or the people who could formulate arguments against social justice were heavily leftist. Well, maybe that's just because Republicans are really bad at academia. At the same time, social justice plays to genuinely worthwhile causes that the average decent person of a Western country would support. Your average modern person doesn't support oppression of gay people or ethnic minorities. I mean, I feel this. One of my best friends is a climate change advocate, and another is an ex-Black Panther who's an advocate for police reform. And many police departments around America do need serious restructuring, and we should be dealing with climate change. But social justice pushes for these worthwhile causes that one would look like a monster to stand against in the worst ways possible. The social justice movement likes to say that if they had- What? Wait, that's the argument? So I have a black friend who believes this thing that I've said makes a person an SJW, but when the left pushes for the thing that he says he likes, they do it in a way where it makes you look really bad. God, he's literally blaming left-leaning people for the fact that he looks bad when he argues against them. I'm sorry, my man. That's on, that's on you, okay? It's a sneaky debate tactic that progressives will use where they make it look like you're racist when you argue against 
racial equality. <laughs> it's a very powerful counter argument more authority they'd be able to fix the systemic problems but from looking at real world evidence that's clearly not the case there are plenty of areas that have been under the control of social justice ideologues and have been for a while however as a good example look at the american west sjw's control all those states coast which has incredibly high inequality still has a good deal of racial segregation what amounts to regressive and classist policies like extremely strict housing laws which hurt the lower classes as well as being so negative for businesses as to weaken their economies and crippling problems like homelessness and drug use i mean as an example look at the city of los angeles which it, it's almost it's almost like summing up an entire state by how sjw it is and then looking at it and seeing that it still has problems and going oops looks like social justice warriors can't fix all these problems might actually be a really stupid form of analysis uh, effectively stopped enforcing rule of law and so mass robberies occurred in this train area effectively turned Yo, Vosh, not to provide defense for this lunatic, but wouldn't that generation disillusion with the Vietnam War be the baby boomers? Yeah, but they didn't end up being the um, the vanguard for modern like political thought. Baby boomers aren't it. Um, the baby boomers uh, may have been the ones who were protesting the Vietnam War and what have you, but it's kind of a whole meme about the baby boomers that after they had their fun in their 20s and 30s, they all became the institutionalists that held back everyone else. Like, that's a whole thing. It was like a whole shift that happened. Most modern, like, progressive advocacy is done by quite young people. But if you want to trace the ideological origins to modern progressive movements, the post-Vietnam War disillusionment would probably be the easiest thing to do. But yeah, it's not, it's not baby boomers who are leading the forefront of, like, modern advocacy. Turning into a hellscape. It's not a coincidence that people are leaving from blue states going to red ones at a really fast rate right now. 20 years ago, the West Coast was extremely creative, pleasant, and prosperous, so much so that it became the center of the future tech revolution. However, as left-wing ideologues seized control of these states, it precipitated their decline. Alternatively, look at Canada, where as- What is that? What does that even mean? The exodus has been happening relatively recently, and many of these states have been firmly left-leaning for decades. There's no correlation here. Also, the only two states that people are moving to in droves are Texas and Florida, and it's because they're developing tech industries themselves, and their cities aren't as expensive to live in as California or New York cities. You know what's going to happen in 10 years? The same thing. It has nothing to do with left-leaning cities or any shit like that. And if you think that, like, San Francisco is uniquely disgusting, you have never been to Florida, okay? I have been to Florida, okay? Trust me, it's not because those cities are less disgusting to be in, all right? It's just because, for a long time, modern tech industry was only really present on the coasts, and now that's not the case, but soon housing prices are going to rise further and further in Miami and Austin and Dallas and what have you. Um, and all this is going to happen over again. Now, 20 years ago, the West Coast was extremely creative, pleasant, and prosperous, so much so that it became the center of the future tech revolution. Again, this guy thinks that he's like the center of the universe. Yeah, 20 years ago, the West Coast didn't have a problem with housing prices or homeless people. All, all problems only began to exist when I realized they exist. Evolution. However, as left-wing ideologues seized control of these states, it precipitated their decline. Alternatively, look at Canada, where as radical leftists gain more and more power, they've pushed for authoritarian policies as leftists do every time. Which takes us to the main point. The social justice- Wait, edit your videos. You cut them off. For authoritarian policies as leftists do every time. Which takes us to the main point. The what? social justice movements are predicted by- w Wait, what authoritarian- po What, 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 what? Leftists do every time. Which takes us to the main point. The social justice movements are predicted by what will give the college educated more work. There's a brilliant historian what? named Peter Turchin who created a computer model that's been able to predict when societies divide and fall into civil wars across history. The driving factors are- Oh, I remember. This is like crackpot shit, if I remember correctly. This is just like one guy said a thing and like no one takes it seriously, but- Wage stagnation with rising cost of living and inequality, which means there's more competition and desperation for fewer good jobs. This pressure means that societies are split among different factions that want more jobs and influence of people like them. Examples of this across history include the English Civil War, the fall of the Roman Republic, the Russian Revolution, and I could name like 20 more. However, it's exactly what's happening in the modern world today. In modern America, the divides between the college-educated left- Who could have guessed that social problems would tend to follow civil wars and internal crises? That's crazy. I've cr Guys, I've created a incredibly thorough computational model that will predict when civilizations go on the decline, okay? And it's when, when bad things happen, bad things follow. If you can believe it. Left and the right, who is a coalition of non-college educated groups like the military, church, and businessmen. You can predict social justice's actions based off what gives people with college degrees more money and influence. To fund the police is what? giving influence to college educated social workers over the police. The diplomacy emphasis is giving it- What? 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 
What? All social movements are about getting college academics job? How? Yeah, social workers are, yeah, famous for their high wages and easy work. Also, people who get degrees in social work aren't the ones who push for... Okay. ...to college-educated diplomats over the military, regulation of businesses giving college-educated bureaucrats power over capitalists, and social justice theory as college professors having moral authority over traditional religion. From what we've seen so far in looking at their actions, social justice isn't driven primarily yes. by a genuine desire to help the downtrodden. Since uh -huh. their policies have been universally ineffective, but keep on being pushed for without question since it's inside the self-interest of the college-educated classes. Social justice merely uses concern for oppressed groups as a way of creating policies that are good for them. Uh -huh. Christianity has been the framework of Western civilization for the better part of 2,000 years. If I think this guy might be a white supremacist, guys. I'm getting a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of a vibe. If you're a Westerner, most of your ideas on how the world works comes from Christianity, even with modern atheism making no sense without a Christian framework. <laughs> would you, would you like to clarify that perspective, please? As Christianity declined in influence, social justice largely took its place among the college educated no? technocrats okay. class mentioned before. In Christianity, Satan takes on the outwards appearance of good, while in substance being the exact opposite. This is the perfect description of social justice, which takes the main assumption. Here's my highly academic video. You see, social justice is exactly like the biblical conceptualization of Satan. ...of Christianity, that scapegoating others and treating them unfairly for things outside their control, as represented in the crucifixion, is evil, and pushes the veneer of that well in reality going for the opposite. The famous Swiss psychologist Carl Jung had a term called the shadow. Ah, he's just a Jordan Peterson fan! Ah, you guys in chat called it. He's a Jordan Peterson fan. It all fits in. No understanding whatsoever of any of the subjects that he talks about, an insistence on incredibly broad narratives as a way of pushing a conservative agenda without explicitly calling for any direct policies, terminal vagueness, uh, and a, an obsession with religiosity and quote-unquote Western civilization. It all fits. Ask is the part of your personality that you want to show the world with a shadow is what you- Oh yeah, and like uh, Jordan Peterson, this guy is a drug addict. You hide and comes out when you're not in your zone or are a poorly integrated person. Social justice is a representation of the toxic elements of Christianity parading under Christian virtues. An example of this is cancel culture. Across <laughs> history, scapegoating was a- <laughs> Picture of a stony as an example. It's like- <laughs> Dude, just show a picture of Auschwitz, man. Just- Put put a picture of Auschwitz Birkenau, okay? Show me the rail yard. Show me the fucking track leading in. All right, you know you want to, man. Come on. A holy rite in which a group would scapegoat a violator of group norms and muster together around the shared sin of killing this person as a way of bringing the community together. The crucifixion was meant to show that that was wrong, and one's connection with morality and God was what was important rather than group politics. The the crucifixion was about how you shouldn't kill people who you ostracize from your community. Wait, I thought it was about Jesus dying for our sins. Wasn't wasn't Jesus Christ dying for our sins the epitome of blaming a guy for problems? If we didn't do cancel culture on Jesus Christ, then he wouldn't have saved us in heaven. Text. Social justice is the exact opposite, and it's driven by group mores in which not being able to keep up with the slightest new verdict about what words are appropriate or not will result in excommunication. It's a McCarthyism that tries to destroy dissidents' lives to supposedly save the community. Social justice is powered by canceling those who violate it, thus making the cancelers feel virtuous that they're more moral. However, since canceling is how one shows moral virtue, it creates a repetitive cycle of more and more insanity and cruelty as the main moral arm of the movement. This is a process oh, we got the tweets to again. each other. The tweets of people talking about celebrities, a thing that is famously only done on the left. Again, like, what he's saying right here about the tendencies for cancel culture are not necessarily incorrect. It's just it has nothing to do with being on the left, because everyone does this. ...other and antisocial behavior, which is referred to by the Christian philosopher René Girard as mimetic, and is how social justice is largely driven by crowd psychology. An example of the shadow is that social justice takes up the heart of Christian philosophy, or the desire to help the downtrodden, with a complete lack of moral structure. Uh -huh, the biggest uh -huh. problem with modern ideologies is that they believe that the ends justify the means, and thus completely lack a moral structure since everything is justified to reach their concrete material goals. Utilitarianism is a lack of a concrete moral structure? Social justice has no framework for what being a decent person is, and what? this is why the rudest, most intolerant, and cruelest people are often social justice warriors. He, he showed the picture. He showed... He's... He... <sighs> 
characters, since it's a philosophy that creates a veneer of morality, which justifies the worst possible actions along the way. Uh -huh. Social justice overemphasizes caring about if others are harmed at the expense of everything else. It throws out and even disrespects traditional Christian values like the search for the truth, humility, courage, and patience. SJWs are anti-courage? What? When was this uploaded? Like a couple of weeks ago. Again, this is what happens. Okay, guys, I've said this before. This is why we need to be more anti-theist, all right? We need to be more anti-theist, okay? When people who believe in God and apply their divine thinking, their magical thinking to political thought, we get shit like this, okay? We need to stop. We need we need to put them back in their place. We cannot allow the Jordan Peterson uh, uh, tendencies to be made rampant, okay? And we need the skeptics back. Call TJ. Values that hold any stable and happy society together. As a stoic Christian, when I talk to a Buddhist, transcendentalist, Muslim, or most atheists, I know that we share the same core values at heart. That's not the case with social justice, which actively goes against the values of a stable society. Okay. From my study of history, I would say social justice is evil for a couple of reasons. Uh -huh. The first of which is that it shoots its own dissenters. The slightest difference in opinion will result in excommunication, which allows insane fanaticism and disconnect from reality to develop. Uh -huh. Secondly, they have no moral compass, which is evident in that their supporters will burn cities, make policies that don't work, and ruin people's careers over minor statements, but you never see the movement hold its own members accountable. Didn't Cuomo, like, sexually harass people? Is that, is, was that the S, the, did, and he, like, get a lot of people killed? So it's just those cancel culture laden SJWs. Literal rebellions are described as peaceful protests. You'll never see a person in social justice. Rebel? Wait, BLM was a rebellion? You're using that terminology a little loosely. But say their movement did something wrong, except not being radical enough. Enough. Christian philosophy refers to Satan as the Lord of Lies. This is since, as the search for the truth is muddied, it means humans have no guiding principles and automatically degrade back to base disgusting norms. If the truth is gone, then the malicious can spread lies. Listen, guy, my dude, if you secretly want to rape kids and you think that, like, the only thing keeping you from doing so is the threat of hell, all right? Then that's, that's a you problem, okay? That's not everyone else. That's a you problem. If the threat of God or the threat of hell is the only thing that's keeping you from being what you consider to be the literal personification of the devil, that's a you problem. Sorry. Don't put that on us, all right? Humans will degrade back to their satanic form. Don't put that on us. That's on you. ...is to benefit them more easily. This is effectively social justice's strategy of saying objective truth doesn't exist, so you can only... No, that would be postmodernism, which you have up here, but again, none of these charts mean anything to him. ...believe in their truth, which means they control reality. This is why they try to break down every barrier and scream at you when you disagree. What? A great example of this is that a group of professors once sent a series of fraudulent studies to social... Hey, I know these ones. Yeah, the uh, grievance studies affair. ...justice journals that were purposely ridiculous, like saying white people should ceremonially wear chains to atone for slavery, or copy and pasting Mein Kampf, but replacing Jews with various oppressive groups, and they had all of them published in real journals. They actually won an award for a paper about how dogs humping in the park is a sign of rape culture. As I've said before, True. this movement has no morality and only cares about power. Now this is the billion dollar question. How worried should we be about social justice, getting worse or seizing more power? Well, this is my answer. I don't think social justice will exist in 20 years. It's becoming oh so God. radical and disliked at such a fast speed and it's so untethered from general public opinion that there- Isn't like every metric for the political positions this guy would call SJW shit? Nah, it doesn't matter. Cause he thinks, S he thinks that pro SJW positions are like people who think evil is good. People who think that it's like you like he this guy probably legitimately thinks that the lgbtq movement is fighting to include like uh, minor attracted people there's no way it doesn't burn out and discredit itself estimates put the social justice cadre at between six to twenty percent of american population and we're definitely already seeing a backlash my worry however is that the backlash will be something even worse than social justice uh -huh. if an entire generation of young men grow up listening to insane feminism the next generation of leadership might push too far in the other direction and become deeply misogynistic for example industrialized the thing leftists don't seem to realize is third wave feminism is the thing most likely to make the hand happen. Dude, I don't want to debate this guy. I want to be locked in a room with this guy, a camera and 48 hours, okay? That's what I want. Th th there's no conversation with this guy that would go over enough. I just want him to not be able to escape while I ask him questions. Literally, I want to interrogate him, okay? This video contains enough... Not even misinformation, really, because misinformation would do it undue credit by suggesting that any argument has been presented. Schizophrenia. This is mental illness, okay? I just want to talk with him. I, I just, I, like, this is just schizo posting in a video. I just want to talk with him.
for like a long time. I want to be, I want, I want a JCS psychology video to be made on me talking with him over all of these things. Okay. Far tend to go to right wing authoritarianism. Much of social justice is nasty, but it's too disconnected from reality to be really dangerous, which is not the case for the authoritarian right. It's our responsibility to make sure whatever backlash happens to social justice remains honorable and keeps the downtrodden from being hurt. The problem is that social justice will continue to get more radical, as it has been doing at faster and faster speeds, largely because their whole moral compass is built off showing themselves to be morally superior. I'm not sure where they'll go next. I'm already surprised at how far they've gotten now, to be honest. Similarly, if the recession that me and a lot of other people think are predicting will come, it will further worsen standards of living, which will make social justice even worse. In summary, expect this movement to get worse until it inevitably burns out due to its own ridiculousness, and then people will- It's, it's, it's your pronouns. It's, it's your pronouns. It's just your pronouns. ...will scramble to hide that they had ever had their pronouns in their social media. However, a big question is how many necessary traditions social justice will eat before it dies. Like communism, social justice never builds anything effective, but tries to rip apart social cohesion for more power. Social justice doesn't even have a theory of constructing everything, with their entire worldview built upon taking from pre-existing successful organisms. What? Another very important thing- What? The funny thing is, is that this guy's political ideology seems to be entirely derived from his incorrect perception of historical Christianity in the West, which means that he's actually incapable of building anything, and in fact, nothing in this video has been, like, a proposed solution to the problems that he says SJWs don't fix. ...thing to consider is that for a civilization to die, only the elite needs to be wiped out or become complicit in the civilization's death. And a major problem here what? is that these ideologues control the groups and systems that create much of our leadership class, or the top universities. The way you deal with social justice is to not surrender to them out of cowardness. They will merely install more ideologues if given- Yes, I agree. Please don't surrender out of cowardice. Please debate me. We need to have a conversation, man. What if all history? We need to have a conversation, okay? the ability to do so and will immediately push for more concessions. If you run a company, don't let diversity coordinators show up since they don't have an incentive to solve racial problems, which would end their job, only to effectively become commissars for their ideology in your organization. The way to fight social justice is to stand for good values. Stand behind things an 11 year old could realize were true, like common human politeness. It's just flat out admitting that his ideology is like, what did I get as a kid and I will never grow up from then? The truth and honor. Like some horrifying Star Trek honor. monster, social justice only gains power from our fear of it. Otherwise, as we've seen with Chaz, it's just a movement run by people who can't organize themselves, can't feed themselves, and aren't very well armed. What if Faultist did? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please like, comment, subscribe, or stay tuned for additional content. Or alternatively, check out my Pearl, my social media, my Patreon, where I've got the first couple hundred pages of my cultural history of America and history of the world. Oh god, that's gotta be an abominably f***ing painful read. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Holy God. All right. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. We did our best, guys. We did him about the details. Does he have a listed Twitter? Is it a Twitter account that he actually, like, uses? Uh, oh, yeah. Twitter. Here we go. One second. <sighs> We're doing this, as always. Hey, I just saw your video on social justice. If we're mean to this guy directly, he probably isn't going to come on, so we're going to be a little bit kind of like polite in the tweet, okay? And I had some serious issues with it. Would you like to come on to debate it sometime? There we go. That's the best we can do. I'm not going to add a smiley face. I'm not going to add a smiley face. Discuss? Uh, should I say discuss? Discuss. This feels dishonest, which is good, because I'm a leftist, an SJW, so I don't believe in truth. There we go. It's tweeted. Go forth. Yeah, I need to keep the crack pipe handy.